um, I have self-published over 25 books and market them. I've been doing this for over 10 years. And I can tell you that successfully self-publishing a book gives an author a great feeling. Well, it's the culmination of a long process. You know, first there is the chore of writing the book, and that can take some years sometimes. And once the book is finished, you're going to embark on a publishing project. But that process is completely different from writing a book and requires a completely different skill set. And book marketing requires another skill set that is quite different from writing a book and publishing it. And that's what this series is about, a series of lectures to publish and market the book. But first, a bit of history. I wrote and published this book in early 2013. The book blurb is shown there. I followed that up with this book, published in late 2013. Again, the book blurb is shown. A few years later, I realized that publishing these books was a mistake because they would mislead a new self-publishing author, as I was misled during my first few books. What happens is if you're looking to find out how to self-publish a book, you go on Amazon and other places, and you, and you come up with a plan that says, first, you get a book on publishing. Then when the book is published, you get a book on marketing. Well, that's the logical approach, but it's not how the real world works. And it's not how I publish my books. So I kind of thought about this and pondered it. And I finally came up with a solution that I published late last year. This book is, it integrates the self-publishing part and the marketing part into a unified project. Um, and that's what these two webinars are about, a six-month plan to self-publish your book and market it at the same time. This graphic displays the main content to be covered in each of the lectures. If the time frame, six months, seems to be out of sync with your understanding of self-publishing, that's because you've been misled by erroneous or misleading information on the web. And we'll talk more about that later. Let's, think, let's deal with a few assumptions. These assumptions are pretty basic. The last one may sound a bit silly. Of course you want the book to be perfect, right? But this assumption isn't really all that silly because many self-published books are far from perfect. In fact, you can safely call them junk. This is the mind map that shows the topics will be to get started on. You'll see a lot of mind maps in this lecture series. I love mind maps. You'll see there's quite a number of topics here too. So first, let's talk about intervals and there's two approaches to self-publishing. This is the overview project part. Does six months seem odd? Well, if you sold the book to a publisher, the publisher would take more than a year before it became available. That's because the publisher is doing a lot of stuff to get your book ready. And you, as a self-published author, have to do all of that publishing chores. Hence, this, hence <clears throat> the six-month interval. The interval provides time to complete all the tasks without going into overload. There are tasks to be completed at monthly intervals. Six, five, four, three, two, at launch and a post-launch. And keep in mind, others have to work on your project. These include cover artists, editors, and beta readers, to name a few. If you aren't sure where these others fit into the project plan, don't worry. I'll explain it at the proper time. Let's see if there's any comments. Anybody have a comment up until now? No, I guess that's good. <laughs> Let's talk about one way to self-publish a book. It's called the lazy way, or the quick and dirty method. If you post a message on social media, like Twitter or LinkedIn, and you say, I just finished writing my book, 
What should I do with it? You'll see comments and advice on the web that urges the inexperienced authors to publish their book this way. Well, let me make a few comments about self-publishing the lazy way. First, the book is a piece of crap. No one will buy it or read it. Second, books that are published the lazy way are the reason that self-publishing has a bad reputation. And third, authors who self-publish this way have no concept of what self-publishing means. Now let's look at a different way. This is the professional way. The meaning of self-publishing is that you, the author, do all the work a publisher would do if you sold the book to it. Since you are the publisher, you are required to perform all the tasks in the slide. Completing them will take time. Self-publishing the book means the professional way means producing a quality book package to hold your quality content. The term quality book package will be the theme of the publishing portion of these lectures. One of the early decisions you have to make is what kind of book will you publish? <coughs> Excuse me. Will it be an ebook? Will you also have a print edition? There's a number of pros and cons associated with this decision. And to simplify the lectures, I put a list of these pros and cons on a web page. There's other stuff on that web page that I'll refer to later, so you may want to keep this web page in mind. Let's talk about book title for a minute. Before you get locked into your book's title, do a bit of research. Find out how many other products use the same name. The search results are shockingly long. You may want to consider the, the title of the book. And now is a good time to think about it. My first book's title was Fool's Gold. And it, uh, it was a good title. It fit the, the uh, subject of the book, the topics. A couple of months after it was published, just for a lark, I did a search on Fool's Gold, and I was shocked by the results. There's 25 pages of stuff called Fool's Gold. There was movies, there were songs, there were albums, there were books, there were games. I couldn't believe all this stuff. And since I was an unknown author, my book was on page 25 where no one would ever find it. So you may want to do some searching, uh, some uh, research on your book title. <coughs> your book publishing, you're probably aware that you need a cover artist and an editor, but a packager may be new. Packagers and publishers are not the same thing. You are the pack. You are the publisher. Now, with a traditional publisher, you submit a manuscript and the publisher, who after reading the content, either rejects it or accepts it. If accepted, the publisher will perform all the tasks and absorb all the expense of producing a finished book and distributing it. A packager takes your manuscript file and cover file and puts them together to produce the book. <coughs> Packages are not concerned with the content of the manuscript and they will reject any manuscript unless it violates the submission guidelines. Kindle is a packager. So is Ingram Spark and Smashwords. We're going to discuss a lot more on packages a little later on. <coughs> if you are an author who is embarking on your first self-publishing project, book marketing is probably an area that is far from your mind. However, it isn't something you address after you finish publishing the book. Marketing has to start long in advance of the book's launch date. <coughs> Excuse me. You can begin to appreciate this situation. Yeah, it makes sense to tell people about the book before they can buy it. And yes, it makes sense to get potential readers interested in a book as early as possible. Hence, the need for an integrated project, such as what I'm describing, where your book marketing overlaps the publishing project. Self-publishing a book is going to cost money. 
your money. And how much money is a variable depends upon how computer savvy you are. Book marketing may also cost money, although there are a large number of tasks that are free. <coughs> I'll provide estimates on costs as we go along. Estimates, not quotes. So let's talk about your task to begin with, we'll stuff about six months before the launch date. As you start your self-publishing project, you're going to come across tasks that are outside your experience as an author. That's to be expected, since the only commonality, <clears throat> commonality between writing a book, self-publishing a book, and marketing the book is that all these activities involve the same book and the same person. You. Let's see if there's any comments. <coughs> no comments yet, huh? I guess that's good. This is what you got to do with the six month date, six month interval. There's only one marketing task, <coughs> but it's a big one, and it will take time to complete it. The launch date. You're the publisher, so you get to choose the launch date. That's your first job as a publisher. As a publisher, you can also change the date later on if it becomes necessary. Finish the manuscript may seem a silly task. Of course your manuscript is finished. Or is it? If your manuscript is the first draft, it is not finished. <coughs> Ernest Hemingway once put it, the first draft of anything is a piece of shit. And I assure you my first drafts are just that. How many drafts does it take to finish a manuscript? <coughs> that is an unanswerable question. In my own case, no one sees my work until I've written the third draft, at least. If that beta readers get a chance to poke holes in it. When I publish one of my books, it is usually a fifth draft, at least, sometimes more. <coughs> one milestone in writing a book is reaching a point where you can hire a content editor to examine it. Excuse me, my cough. Our content editors are expensive. An alternative to hiring a content editor is to recruit other writers and ask them to critique your work. These are also called beta readers. <coughs> Six is a good number of beta readers to have. It will give you a range of comments and opinions to look at. More is good, but you may have to settle for less. The comments from beta readers will identify problems that must be addressed. If they do their job correctly, they will likely tear your book apart, and that can be a painful experience for an inexperienced author <coughs> who probably thinks the work is already damn near perfect. Personally, I love it when beta readers punch holes in my story. This allows me to make it better, make it better. You can download a list of questions to send to beta readers. It's on the Padlet site mentioned previously. It will make their job and yours much easier. Marketing for the unwary is fraught with financial peril. It's quite easy to unwittingly send money on services that provide no value to you or your readers. This happens most frequently to authors who don't have a marketing plan for their book. Having a strategic marketing plan will help protect you from these money wasters. <coughs> on the Padlet webpage, there are instructions on getting a copy of my strategic marketing plan or spreadsheet. You can use it to record your answers. In building a marketing plan, you have to define your products 
and think about it in terms of other books that are competing for the reader's money. As you can see, these questions make you think. These questions on the slide are critically important ones. Later on, you'll use their answers to develop an important message called the book blurb. For now, though, you just have to come up with the answers and put them into the spreadsheet. This set of questions is directed at figuring out who your customer is. <coughs> Shotgun marketing aimed at the general population is a waste of time and money. You have to focus your marketing plans on customers who are interested in your product. If you have written a nonfiction book, you must have had a set of potential readers in mind. For instance, if you have written a book about fixing household plumbing, your potential readers are people who live in homes with leaky faucets. <coughs> if you wrote a children's picture book, you may think the kids are the customers. They're not. Kids don't have money or credit cards. Your customers are the parents and the grandparents. If your book is a fictional tale, you have to position it dependent upon the potential audience. Romance readers are quite different from mystery fans, and so are sci-fi fiction novels. <coughs> In either case, <clears throat> your book will entertain the reader, which is a way of solving a customer problem. Typical sales channels are Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and iStore. Typical marketing channels are Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. <coughs> pricing and pricing analysis will be discussed later. You need a mission statement, but this requires some soul searching. Is a typical mission statement. <coughs> you have to have objectives. Financial objectives could be a, so to sell X number of products or services and bring in Y dollars in sales revenue. Secondary goals can be non financial. <coughs> Such as gaining, such as gaining so a certain number of radio interviews. You need also need budgets. <coughs> Excuse me. You need a budget because <clears throat> a lot of your tactical plans require money. Many are free, but many are not. The budget will guide you through what tactics you can fund and what ones to ignore. Eventually, you'll develop a tactical marketing plan. That's what we're going to talk about. The marketing plans, the strategic marketing plan, the tactical plan, and the mission statement all have to support each other. An example of tactical tasks are keyword analysis, book giveaways, <coughs> and ads. So now we're at five month point. And here's what you got to do now. <coughs> Good thing about the marketing is you probably already do a lot of it if you're on social media. If you did the beta readers about a month ago, <coughs> you should be getting comments back. And you have to re revise the manuscript to agree. <clears throat> to go along with what your beta reader said. You still have time to revise the manuscript and stay on track with the publication plan, though. At this point, you need a cover. You need a quality book cover, a unique one. 
Studies have shown that many readers are initially attracted to a book by the cover. Consequently, a shoddy cover won't attract many potential readers. How do you find the cover artist? <coughs> I recommend you write query people on LinkedIn and Goodreads groups asking if they have a cover artist that they've used. This is the best way. And once you get a couple of names, email a cover artist and ask them for a price on describe your project. There's an issue though, if you go on the web, <clears throat> it's quite easy to find sites that what cover artists have there where they have books, ebook covers that are quite reasonable, like $25 or less. <coughs> but the problem is that these are generic and they probably won't fit your book very well. So what you do is you give them 25 bucks, they put your name and your title on the, on the cover and send it to you. However, they retain the copyright for that blank and they can sell it to other authors. So it's quite possible you'll see your cover on another book. <coughs> Print covers are more complicated than ebook covers. With ebooks, you only need a graphic for the front cover. Print book covers, on the other hand, have three parts the front cover, which is the same as the ebook cover, a back cover, and the spine between the two. In addition, print books come in a number of sizes, and the size has to be determined before you can ask for a cover. This is what a print book cover looks like. It looks a little odd the first time you see it. The back cover is on the left, the right cover is on the right, the front cover is on the right, and in between you have the spine. Notice the blank space on the back cover on the lower right. <coughs> That's where your packager will put an ISBN number. ISBN stands for International Standard Book Number. And more about that later. And guess who gets to write all the material on the back cover? Yeah, that's right, you do. So now we're up to marketing on five months. This should be pretty quick though because this. If you haven't been, a, I'm assuming that you all have social media sites that you use. I use four that I'm going to talk about. <coughs> I'll talk about them very quickly and maybe skip it because of my voice. I use Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and um, I guess that's it. Instagram sometimes. Oh, Goodreads. Goodreads is very good. You need to be on Goodreads. Once you have an account set up, <clears throat> you can establish an author page with a bio. And later when you get a cover and uh, other material on your book, you can put it up on Goodreads where people can find it. Facebook is popular and controversial. <clears throat> Facebook has an option called Pages, and you want one. But you can't start it unless you also have a personal account. <coughs> pages can be started for businesses, music groups, community, even authors. You can start one for your book, or better yet, start one for yourself as an author. Once you start the page, add your book cover, your book blurb, and new reviews as you get them. LinkedIn is a good site it's for professionals from all types of businesses, including authors. If you sign up, you can find groups that are similar to what you're doing, self-publishing, fiction writing, non-fiction writing, book marketing, Join some of these groups and start some conversations with people. 
<coughs> that could be very helpful to you. Twitter is popular, but it's quite different than the other sites. Twitter uses hashtags, <coughs> which, <coughs> which is what used to be called a, a pound sign. Now we're at the four month period. And this is what you gotta do. It's only one marketing task, but it's a biggie. Packages are essential to a self publisher. <clears throat> As I said before, it puts the manuscript and a cover file together and it distributes the book to various sellers. <clears throat> Whenever one of these sellers records a sale, the packager receives the sales revenue, accumulates it, and sends you a royalty check, usually once a month. Both the seller and the packager keep part of the sales revenue, and you get the rest. While you're looking for packagers, you may come across the Vanity Press. There are many of them. They're only interested in how thick your wallet is. They'll publish anything, no matter how bad it is, as long as the author can pay the multi-thousand dollar fees. Actually, Vanity Presses are easy to spot. They advertise. If you visit a website and see an ad for a publishing company, it most certainly is a Vanity Press. I use four packages, two for ebooks, two for print books. Why two? I do that in order to increase the number of markets that sell my books. Kindle distributes ebooks only within the Amazon universe. At the moment, that includes 13 worldwide markets in Europe, Central and South America, Asia, and Australia. Smashwords distributes ebooks to non Amazon sites such as Barnes & Noble, iBooks, Kobo, and a number of others. <clears throat> For print books, I use two others. I use Ingram Spark and CreateSpace, which is now Kindle. The major distinction between these is that Ingram distributes books to Ingram and Baker and & Taylor. Ingram is used by many bookstores, and Baker and & Taylor deals mostly with libraries. Kindle distributes to other Amazon sites, such as the UK, Germany, and Japan. An important difference between Ingram Spark and Kindle is this. <coughs> With Ingram Spark, you have a chance of getting your book carried by bookstores. With Kindle, you have zero chance of getting the book into bookstores. Why? Because Kindle won't allow the bookstores to discount as deeply as they're accustomed to. And because Kindle won't allow bookstores to return books, these two factors result in a bookstore's refusal to handle Kindle print books. Recently, they started a new something new called the Packager Conversion Service. They'll take your ebook and convert it into a print book. <coughs> <coughs> But they'll take your print book and convert it into an ebook. But they'll charge you for that. Currently, in Ingram Spark, the charge is $60 per print page to create an ebook. So if your print book is 300 pages, the conversion service will cost you 180 bucks. And you will also have to provide a new unused ISBN. EPUB 3 and ISBNs will be covered in the next lecture. Kindle also has a conversion service. They will convert a print book to an ebook. Of course, to convert an ebook, to convert an ebook into a print book, you have to have a print book cover. In converting a print book to an ebook, Kindle will not create an EPUB 3 compliant ebook. It will create a Mobi edition, 
In other words, your converted ebook will not be compatible with the submission guidelines of other, of other packages. <coughs> I don't use any conversion services since I prepare both a print book manuscript and an ebook manuscript. Getting paid. This is an important consideration. You never know, you may actually sell some books. There's three ways you can get paid. One way is to receive money directly from people who buy your books at events, appearances, and lectures. <coughs> you give them a book, <coughs> preferably signed, and they hand you cash and or a check. This is the simplest and most lucrative method of selling the book. <coughs> since you don't have to split the revenue with a distributor or a packager. However, reality says these appearances will be geographically limited. The second way to sell your book is via websites such as Smashwords, Kindle, Amazon, Barnes & Noble. The third way is via bookstores. Libraries may also publish a book from the distributor. Packages will transfer your money directly to a bank account or to your PayPal account using electronic funds transfer. They will not send a check to your house. <coughs> this is uh, not a task, but this is just a definition of what goes on in the printing world, in the publishing world. Print on demand or pod, as it's usually called, is a process that's used to fulfill print books. It is used extensively by the indie, indie press houses and all the packages you'll come across. The way the traditional publishers operate is they print thousands of books at a time and ship them to warehouses. From there, the books are distributed to bookstores. This is an expensive way to do business, and it only fits the business model of the big boys. The smaller publishers and packages use pod. In effect, what pod means is that the copies of your print book don't physically exist until someone places an order. With modern computer controlled printing machines, the pod book can be printed almost instantly. <coughs> Most orders can be fulfilled within a day or two. At this point in time, you need to hire an editor. Your book has problems, a lot of problems, no matter how many times you went through it. Editors provide another pair of eyes to read and polish your manuscript. You may think your manuscript is perfect, but it isn't. <clears throat> At an absolute minimum, your book will require copy editing. If your errors aren't rooted out, the reader will think she bought a book written by an amateur. If you want to produce quality content, it has to be professionally edited. Always remember, your name is on the title page and the cover. So you want your book to be as perfectly as possible. You can ask for editor recommendations in your LinkedIn groups. Editing will be the most expensive cost in your publishing process. It is big bucks. There are the number of type of editors, number of types. Developmental editors help with the storyline and the character, and they are most expensive. Line editors provide comprehensive help. <coughs> and we'll look at the plot, sentence structure, dialogue, word usage, and other issues. Copy editors will find a lot of mistakes you missed, include typos, incorrect usage. A good editor will also find clumsy sentence structure. Proofreaders are similar to copy editors. They will find top of typos, grammar, and check for complete sentences and occasional word, wrong word usage. But they don't care about clumsy sentences. You need a website. Whether you like it or not, you're publishing a book in the 21st century. 
And the way books are found and bought these days is primarily via the internet. Therefore, you and your book need a web presence. Before we get into that, let's see if there's any comments. Let's see. How, Calvin says, let me see the first one here. How can you set a realistic budget and sales goals for your first book? Well, you're gonna to to do some research. There are some books, such as my the book I showed you in the beginning, that has a lot of cost data in it. <coughs> you can deal with other authors. You can find them on the web and ask them what they cost, you know, what they spent money on. It basically comes down to research. Sales goals are really tricky. We'll get into some of that next week or in the next lecture. But the sales goal, you got to understand that uh, when you serve first thought, you are an unknown author with an unknown book. So you got to use the marketing to try and get your book known around. And that's how you get sales. It's uh, in order to get sales, <clears throat> you first have to market the book. You can't sell a book that hasn't been marketed because nobody knows about it. So oh, that's the yeah, part of the problem is that you have to come up with a marketing budget <coughs> and then do your research on what it will cost. Some of that will be in this lecture today and tomorrow. Uh, let's see, that's about it for now. So we'll go back to the slides. Here are three website packages you can use. Please establish a website that also has a blog built into it. <coughs> I used Blogger for a while, but I switched to WordPress. <coughs> I've never used Weebly, but I, it's quite popular. WordPress comes in two flavors. WordPress.com uses a shared domain name. WordPress.org uses a, you have to establish your own domain name and you need a server. WordPress.com is fairly simple. <coughs> WordPress.org is more complicated to use. But WordPress.org is much more flexible. WordPress and all, all just about all websites these days have two types of functions pages and posts pages are static and that they don't change unless you deliberately set out to change them posts are used for blogging and these aren't static like pages a new blog post appears at the top of a website once you publish it when you write a second post the initial one moves down to make room for the first one So the standalone version, you'll need a server and a domain name. There are many server companies you can use. Well, the, what happens is this. <clears throat> With a server, you rent a small piece of computer memory on the server. For this, you pay an annual fee. <coughs> In return, the server provides technical assistance. Domain name for my site is hankcoins.org. I purchased it from the server. Domain names have to be renewed once a year. And my iPad is stuck. Okay, hang on a minute. Go back.
I'm having technical difficulties here. Hang on a minute. All right, we're back. The shared version of WordPress it uses a common server <coughs> and a common domain name. It has a free, very limited version and a series of more robust but paid versions. Here's what you use a website for. Basically, you use it to pimp your book. There should be a dedicated page for the book and it should be fairly easy to find. Initially, that page should have a picture of the cover, your book blurb, and buy links. You can also put a short synopsis on it. Use the blog function to write blog posts. They can be about anything, your grandkids, writing anecdotes, vacation plans, and pictures. The important thing is to issue blog posts periodically so that people will build up an interest in the blog and revisit it. It's important to write blog posts about the book also. Tell the readers why you wrote the book what problems you had to overcome, and what you liked about the process. If it's fiction, you can also interview your characters. I love doing that. That's a lot of fun. So I made it through here. My voice is still kind of hanging in there. Anybody have any questions or comments? I have one. Is this like the what you were expecting? Okay, let's drop out of Any questions? I'm trying to get this thing to fill the screen again. I don't know how to do that. Let's see, Calvin Beam says, what I expect, <clears throat> probably an overload by now, all the stuff I throw at you. <coughs> so I'll give you data recovery before I throw more stuff at you next uh, Thursday. Well, I got a day to recover, Calvin. I think I'll, I think I may be back. I'm surprised. I, I'm surprised I've acted up. I thought I'd be good. Anybody have a question about the stuff I threw at you? Anything you're not clear about? Well, we don't have any questions or comments, so I guess that we'll wrap it up. You have my email address, so if you think of anything afterwards, send me an email, and I'll I'll address your issue or your question. <coughs> Thanks for watching. So until Thursday, adios.